Good morning to all criminology students from various criminology schools from the Visayas, Mindanao, and Luzon region. In today's episode, the topics which will be the center of discussion will be one of the subjects under the major area CDI, specifically FAR technology and arson investigation. So in this course, we will not only be focusing on the principles of technology of fire and its behavior, but also will be emphasizing on the elements of arson, including the investigation thereof. At the same time, we will be touching on the hierarchical structure or the organizational structure of the Bureau of Fire Protection Agency here in the Philippines. I would say that uh, fire is already part of our daily lives because the moment when we cook our own food, especially um, to those individuals who came from far-flung areas, usually we use firewood. We built a fire in order to cook our own food. But along with the advantages of in the utilization of fire, especially in cooking our own food, also entwined disadvantages. So we also have disadvantages of fire because uh, if mismanaged, fire is something that can cause not just on the destruction of the property, but uh, it can also destroy or it can also cause destruction of lives. So uh, if we will take a look on the records or on the fire incidents in the Philippines, from 2013 to 2017, the Bureau of Fire Protection Agency, which is in charge um, in, in recording fire incidents in our country, the BFP recorded a total of 77,724 fire incidents. This is from 2013 to 2017. Um, this figure is an average of 15,545 fire incidents every year or 42 fire incidents a day during the period the total estimated damage to property reached 23.273 billion or an average of 4.65 billion every year but what is sad is that during this period from 2013 to 2017 we have a total of 1257 people 1,257 people whose lives um, have been, you know, have been taken away because of fire inc incidents. So, 1,257 people were killed, which is an average of 251 deaths per year. So, imagine the figure, guys. You can imagine the figure that uh, even though fire is something that is important in our daily lives, we cannot neglect the fact that fire can also be one of the causes in you know in destroying lives of the or lives of the individual not just the property not just the property but most important most importantly would be the lives of the lives of the people so from 2013 to 2017 the number of injured persons during the 5 year period reached 4239 or an average of 848 persons this means that those individuals those individuals who have been injured because of fire incidents you can take a look at it that in every year there is an average of 848 persons who are injured uh, because of the because of the fire destruction and uh, according to the bureau of fire protection in the record there are three causes of fire or three causes of fire incidents. Usually, uh, the fire incident is caused mostly by electrical connection or faulty wiring. Okay, wala nagkadimaw ang pagwiring, especially if uh, if a particular house would utilize what we call as octopus connection. Some the octopus connection. When you say octopus connection, you just use a very light um, wire material. And at the end of the wire, dito ni mo ipampansak ang various devices which contains high voltages or that needs high voltages. For example, 
Dito ni mo ipansak ang refrigerator. Dito ni pansak ni mo ang electric fan. And this is something that uh, can be considered as octopus fire, uh, wiring that can also be one of the causes for faulty. Okay? Faulty connection. Something that can something that can cause fire incidents. Aside from electrical connection, we also have lighted cigarette butt. Okay? So when uh, when people will smoke and you just throw the cigarette butt anywhere without proper disposal, the cigarette butt is also something that can cause fire incidents. And the third one, which is one of the top three causes of fire, is open flame burning. When you say open flame burning, that means you do not have a an allowable space okay allowed space by the government allowed space by the, by the barangay to to burn something to burn material especially garbages and when the garbages is burned openly sometimes the flame can conflagrate from one place to the other and that can also cause fire incident now to understand the nature of fire to understand the nature of fire, we will go with the two underlying theories that will explain how fire can be created. There are only two. Number one, this will this will come out in the board examination cadet. So I want you to remember this. Number one is fire triangle theory. Number two is fire tetrahedral theory. These two theories of combustion or these two theories of fire are similar with each other. They only differ on elements because the elements of far triangle theory consist only of three while the elements of far tetrahedron theory consist of four. So they only vary on the fourth element which is present on the latter or on the far tetrahedron theory. So in the far triangle theory, just imagine that for a person to create, for him to be able to create a fire, there must be three ingredients that must be present. Without these three ingredients, or even one of the ingredients is absent, automatically fire cannot be created. So, kinahanglan nga these three ingredients should be present. And if these three ingredients are present, fire can be created. So, according to fire triangle theory, there are only three elements that you have to combine. Number one is the fuel. Okay? Number two is the heat. And number three is the oxygen. The fuel, which is the first element of the fire triangle theory, does not refer to flammable materials. Or does, this does not refer to petroleum products. Okay? This does not refer to petroleum products again. The fuel that is... Um, referred here in the fire triangle theory would refer to any material that can be utilized in the production of combustion. For example, nakai kahoy, piece of wood. The piece of wood is something that can create fire. So the piece of wood is a fuel. Kung nakai, uh, for example, sagbot, dried leaves. So, dried leaves is something that can be used to utilize or to create fire. So, dried leaves can also be a fuel. Gasoline or uh, petroleum products is something that can also produce fire. So, they can also be classified as fuel. So, really exclusive ang definition there is a fuel. So, again, when we say fuel, this refers to any reducing agent or anything that can produce or something that can be utilized in the production of fire, like wood, like like leaves, like paper, plastics, petroleum products, anything that can be uh, that can be utilized in the production of fire. The heat that is referred in the fire triangle theory would refer to the temperature. Okay, the temperature in the fire triangle theory is something that should be sufficient in the production of fire because if you have the heat and the heat is not enough to produce ignition of course you have to you have to say that uh, fire cannot be created but rather smoke can only be created but if the heat is enough the temperature is enough uh, uh, to cause ignition plus the oxygen okay the oxygen coming from the air is present and the uh, with the heat and the fuel automatically fire can be 
produced. So again, fuel would be something that could be uh, used in the production of fire. This is also known as the reducing agent. The heat would refer to the temperature uh, of the fire triangle theory, while the oxygen would refer to the oxidizing agent. So uh, I would like to emphasize more on uh, oxygen again. I would like to emphasize again on oxygen. Now imagine guys, you will light a candle. Okay? Dagkutan ni mo ang kandila. After you light the candle, imong gibutang sa, let us say, uh, usa ka botelya. Okay? Ibutang ni mo ang candle sa botelya. And you leave it for several, you know, for several seconds. You can observe nga ang candle or ang first sa candle will gradually will gradually be off or will gradually be eliminated. Magkahinahinay siyang kapalong. Why? Simply because ang fire can consume the oxidizing agent inside the bottle or the oxygen inside the bottle. So once the oxygen has already been fully consumed inside the bottle, automatically the fire will be off. The fire will be exterminated or will be terminated. Why? Because one of the elements is already absent and that is oxygen. Okay? So basically, in, in the suppression of fire, if we will implement or if we will um, reflect on the fire triangle theory, the only way for you to suppress fire is to remove one element. Because without that one element, fire can never be created. Now, as I have said a while ago, the only difference between fire tetrahedron and fire triangle theory would be on the fourth element. Although they have the same elements from the first, second, and the third, but in the fire tetrahedron theory, one element should be should be reached. We call it as chemical reaction. So according to fire tetrahedron theory, which is more exhaustive compared to the former, you cannot create fire if you have the heat, oxygen, or the fuel without the chemical reaction. There should be a chemical reaction between the three elements. And that chemical reaction is something that could create fire. So this is the only difference between fire tetrahedron theory and fire triangle theory. Because fire triangle theory is very limited in the sense that it does not mention on, you know, it does not mention on the three elements. Uh, it does not mention purely on chemical reaction, but rather it only mentions on the three elements. While the fire tetrahedron theory, it suggests that even though you have the heat, you have the oxygen, you have the fuel, but if these three elements does not have the fourth or there is no chemical reaction between the three, there cannot be fire that can, that can be created. So, there has to be a chemical reaction. Now, let us review again the elements. Again, oxygen is the oxidizing agent. Okay? Oxidizing agent. Oxygen is one of the uh, elements of air. You cannot say that the air only consists of oxygen. Daghana nga mga elements. Ang usaana is ang oxygen. The fuel on the other hand is the reducing agent, the material or substance being burned in the combustion process. So this is, as I have said a while ago, the material that can help produce fire. Kung sa maning fuel, the fuel again that is referred here does not refer to petroleum products. I am not referring to petroleum products, but any material that can be burned in the combustion process. So since wood, paper, garbage of any kind is something can, that can produce or can be burned in the combustion process, so therefore, these materials can be considered as fuel. The heat again, on the other hand, is the temperature. The energy component of the fire tetrahedron, when heat comes in contact with fuel, the energy supports the combustion process. So these are the difference. Uh, these are the difference between uh, the fire triangle and the fire tetrahedron theory as to the genesis or as to the beginning or as to how fire can be created. Fire is basically associated with the word combustion. So, on some combustion? Combustion is a self-sustaining chemical reaction producing energy or products that can cause more reactions of the same kind. So, as you can see, 
as what you can see on on the picture that uh, that that is reflected on your screen you can see the three elements the fuel oxygen the heat with the chemical reaction between the three and that can cause fire once uh, once the heat is enough that can cause ignition the heat can produce elements further elements or further materials that can sustain the reaction so once the reaction is sustained automatically fire can also be sustained pareha good anang kung ang imuhang ang imuhang uh, siga or ang imuhang uh, kalayo daghang fuel or daghang material daghang wood then you can sustain possibly the the fire pero kung wala na wood kay exhausted na ang one of the elements it's either ang fuel wala na kay wala na ka nahud na nakaugsog nod or walay oxygen kay wala kayo hangin nga nakalapos or bugnaw ang lugar walay heat ang mga makasustain automatically there can be no uh, combustion that can be sustained but if in case Kompleto na a na ang heat na ang oxygen na ang fuel and this uh, created chemical reaction automatically this can cause uh, uh, the combustion to be sustained in a long process until one of the elements is exhausted. Now in the process of combustion, when I say combustion again, this is associated with fire or burning. So when I say burning or combustion, this may mean two uh, same terms. So, in the process of burning or in the process of combustion, there are basically four products, okay? Upatka products of combustion. Number one is fire gases. Number two is flame. Number three is heat. And number four is smoke. Now, let us examine these four products. So, when we say fire gases, this would refer to the various types of gases or products of combustion that remains after the burning process. So anything, any type of gases, okay, that remains after combustion or when the combustion or the process of burning started to cool down. Oh, sorry, pasabot started to cool down. Bote pasabot na horot na, nawala na ang siga or nahinahinay na og kawala ang ang fire or ang kalayo ang nabilin ana ginatawag na siya og fire gases fire gases is different from flame because flame can either be uh, pwede siya bluish in color especially if, if the material or the fuel that is utilized thereof would refers to chemicals Pwede po siya red, but you, what we usually see uh, in our surroundings, especially if the fuel um, um, utilized wood or paper, ang iyahang na kalayo is usually uh, red or color red. So the color red or the luminous body would refer to the flame. Okay? The flame. Take note, the pyrolosis which came out in the board examination, I think way back 2019, refers to the chemical process whereby the fire consumes the most solid part of the fuel. It is the thermal decomposition of a solid fuel through action of heat. Unsay po tayo po tayo pyrolosis. When say pyrolosis, ang solid nga part sa fuel, again, we say fuel, katong, material that is burned in the combustion process. For example, ang wood. Kaya ang wood, maumay na sunog in the burning process, sumatawag siya fuel. So, kanang fuel or kanang wood, it can be decomposed, mahurot siya by means of the heat coming from the fire. Ang tawag ang nga process of decomposing or exhausting the solid part of the fuel by the action of it, we call it as Pyrolosis. Okay? Again, pyrolosis is one of the terms that came out in the 2019 Criminology Licensure Examination. The third product of combustion is known as heat. So, heat is the temperature. It is the energy measured in degree of temperature. It is the product of combustion that spread the fire. Because basically, without the heat, 
technically without that heat you cannot propagate you cannot propagate fire you cannot spread the fire because without the temperature fire can never be created the last one is the product of incomplete combustion we call it as smoke ngano ginatawag ba chak incomplete combustion incomplete combustion in the sense that the process of combustion or the process of the burning is not fully attained ngano mang not fully attained for example if you have the wood wood is the fuel you have the oxygen exposed sa air you have the um, you have the heat pero ang oxygen is not enough to support combustion And even though you have the chemical reaction between the three elements the heat temperature and the uh, and the fuel even though you have the heat re- uh, chemical reaction but the heat or one of the elements or the oxygen is not sufficient enough to produce successfully a fire or a burning process automatically what would be the result is not the flame is not the 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 red flammable or the red flame that you can see but rather you can see the smoke only the smoke again is the product of incomplete combustion nganong incomplete again kay one of the elements is not sufficient enough to to successfully attain the process of combustion so again we have four products number one is the uh, number one is the uh, fire gases number two is the flame and number three is the heat and number four is the smoke now let us go now to the progressive stages so when say stages pasunod from the first phase up to the last phase so basically we only have three okay three progressive stages the beginning or the initial stage when you lit a candle or when you try to burn a piece of wood kanang pinakauna nga sika di as you can see on the figure okay ang tawag ana is incipient kanang pagsugod pa lang sa pagsiga okay pagsugod pa lang sa pagsiga ang tawag ana incipient phase or beginning phase once the fire on the incipient phase can sustain Okay, can sustain in producing more heat, okay? More heat that can cause the uh, the, the conflagration of fire. Pwede na lang matawag sa free burning phase. The phase of burning in which the material or structures are burning in the presence of adequate oxygen. So again, ang oxygen is only one of the elements of air. Without the uh, the without the sufficient oxygen Without the sufficient oxygen, you cannot see fire being sustained. But rather, you can only see smoke, the process of incomplete combustion. So if there is adequate material, there is adequate fuel, adequate oxygen, adequate heat that can sustain combustion, na anak sa process kaya ginatawag o free burning phase. Pero kung maupay pagsugod, the moment you start in kindling the fire, ang tawag ana incipient or beginning phase. The final phase of burning or combustion wherein the flame ceases or ni undang na wherein the flame started to be extinguished but then smoke and heat completely fill the confined room so nasunog ang imo makita is only smoke okay okay wala nay wala nay flame smoke and heat that remains meaning na human na Okay, na decompose na ang fuel ng material. Ang tawag sa final phase is smoldering phase. Ang fire is classified basically into two generic types. Number one type would be based on the cause, and number two would be based on burning fuel. Again, akong balik-balik ko ni, the fuel that is referred In the study of uh, fire technology and arson investigation refers to the material that is burned during the combustion process. Sir, matawag ba o fuel ang wood or ang kahoy? Ang kahoy kay pwede man nga may utilize in the burning process, pwede siya matawag o fuel. Piece of paper is a fuel. Cloth is a fuel. 
petroleum products such as gasoline, diesel, kerosene. Matawag na siya og fuel. So sa based on the cause, fire can either be natural fire, accidental fire, and intentional fire. So when we say natural fire, this refers to fires that occurs naturally. Or this refers to fires that occurs without the intervention of without the intervention of man. For example, na ay lightning. Pag lightning ni strike on a specific dried uh, uh, dried piece of wood na sunog ang wood, the fire conflagrated that resulted to forest fire. So sa may tawag sa may sa matong a klase ng fire, natural fire. Accidental fire and intentional fire are basically types of fire that are actually caused by human intervention. But the difference between the two is that in accidental fire, there is no intent, there is no motive, wala ni motoyua. Like for example, electrical wiring. Electrical wiring is accidental because you do not intend to burn a particular house. Or even, um, even when you... Uh, even when you light a you know a heater or when you plug in a heater in your respective house tapos nagkasunog so the fire that is caused by the heater can also be considered as accidental or you 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 kindle a, uh, a candle you lighted a candle and uh, without knowing that the candle um um that the candle fell on the floor or the uh or the candle fell on the on a bamboo furniture and the bamboo furniture was burned that can cause fire conflagration again that can also still be considered as accidental fire but if you will take a look at intentional fire which is which is uh, criminal in nature between the three intentional fire is criminal in nature because this involves intent okay you produce a fire you burn a building upon your own you know, upon your, your own volition, upon your own choice. So, sa may tawag niya, intentional. So, kay intentional man, dre mo sulod ang ginatawag na to og arson case in the intentional. But never in accidental, natural. Asa siya mo sulod? Ang arson case in the intentional fire. So, these are the three types of fires according to the cause. But according to the burning fuel, okay, according to the burning fuel, we have five. Number one is A, B, C, D, and the fifth one is K. Alright? A, B, C, D, K. Delete A, B, C, D, E. But rather A, B, C, D, K. So if in the board examination, uh, the question will ask you, which of the following is the is one of the classification of Fars? So kung classification of Fars na gani ang pangutana, you have to remember nga naalay duha ka generic types of or generic classification of fire. Number one is based on the cause. Number two is based on the burning fuel. Based on the cause is natural fire, accidental fire, intentional fire. Based on the burning fuel, you take a look at class A, class B, C, D, and K. So, let us concentrate on the second generic type. The class A to K. So, class A would refer to any fire consisting of ordinary combustible materials. Again, kay based on the burning fuel man ta, sa class A, ang fuel nga gigamit in the production of fire would refer to Ordinary combustible materials consisting of fiber, like for example, wood, paper, cloth. O magawa, matawag na siya o class A fire. Sir, how about dried leaves? So dried leaves, a class A Japan, class A nga, class A nga fire. Okay? Branches, o branches, pwede siya sa wood. Pag-consider siya o class A nga fire. How about plastic, sir? Plastics. Masama siya mabilong. Again, ordinary combustible materials, class A nga, fires. Ang class B type of fire are those, uh, type, uh, are those kind of fire consisting or using the fuel 
specifically flammable liquids or uh, flammable materials. This refers to a fuel that can, you know, that can utilize petroleum products. Okay? So, petroleum products, masulod siya sa class B first or any flammable liquids. Kung sa mga example sa flammable liquid, pwede kerosene, pwede diesel, pwede gasoline, unleaded or uh, premium, pwede grease, pwede oil, paint, solvents, anything, any liquid that can be, that can that is considered as flammable. Ang class C, on the other hand, is different from the former. Why? Because class A would refer to any type of fire that involves electrical equipment. Okay? Electrical wiring. Basta naghiskot na electricity like electrical panel, electrical wire, motor wiring, etc. Uh, rice cooker ni mo, imong heater. Mo'y nakaingon na nasunog ang balay. So, ang kanang type of fire is considered as class C fire. Class D fires, on the other hand, would refer to combustible metals. When you see combustible metals, these are type of metals that can be, you know, that can be burned. Metal that can produce fire. For example, magnesium, aluminum. These are fire, uh, these are metals that can produce um, combustion or fire. So, this can be classified as class D. Class K, on the other hand, which is the update in the classification, kaysa una, A to D raman, napunan siya K, inatawag niya siya o a type of fire that involves commercial, commercial cooking equipment like cooking oils, animal fats, vegetables oil, vegetable oils, like what you are doing inside the, you know, inside the kitchen when you try to fry a fish and it produce or it cause a fire, ang tawag niya is class K fire. So, these are the differences between the four or five rather, five types of fire according or based on the burning fuel. Class A again, ordinary combustible materials. Class B would be flammable liquids including petroleum products. Class C would be electrical wirings or electrical equipment. Class D would be on combustible metals while Class K is referred to as kitchen fires that involves commercial cooking equipment. So I hope you understand the differences between the five. Now let us go now to the types of heat transmission. So this refers to you know, the ways or methodologies on how heat can be passed from one material to the other material. So we only have four. Number one is uh, conduction. Number two is radiation. Number three is convection. Number four is flame contact. So also many conduction. Conduction is the transmission of heat through an object medium or conductor such as pipe, metal, or even wall. Radiation is the transmission through the discharge and spread of heat from heated or burning source. Radiation takes place through the air or through the space that causes another flammable object to ignite. Conviction is the transmission of heat by the moving currents of liquefied. Huh? Liquefied. Take note of the word liquid gas. Flame contact heat may be conducted from one body to another by direct flame contact. Now, let us take a look on the difference by examining, the, examining this picture on your screen. So, in the conduction, now you can see, nga na siya boiling pot, right? Boiling pot ni, nga na ito big. Ang conduction from the boiling pot, right? From the boiling water, nga ga init, ni transfer ang iyang heat padulong sa iyang handle. Ang handle, ginatawag ni siya o conductor. So, let us just say, you put or you try to hold the handle of the the, the 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 pot okay the boiling pot so pagkapot ni mo ana mainitan ang imuang kamot basically mainitan yun na that's normal so ang pagkainit sa imong kamot is caused by the heat conductor ang handle sa ang handle sa boiling pot so mo na ginatawag o conduction because there is a conductor okay the heat is passed from the water uh, from the boiling water 
up to this point because of the the handle which is the conductor radiation on the other hand is the transfer of heat because of air okay because of air for example naka gi sugnuran diha even if you will be a distance from the from the fire let us say half meter from the fire still you can feel the heat why because of radiation because heat can be transferred or can be trans uh, transmitted through through the air even if you are half meter distance mailitan na japon ka because of radiation conviction on the other hand is the transmission of it because of the liquid gas for example if you will put your hands on top of the boiling water all right in this portion on top of the boiling water you can feel the heat because the heat will be carried on will be carried by the liquefied gas Diba mo evaporate man ang tubig pag initon? Ang katong vapor niya, inito siya. And that vapor, that liquefied gas, once it hits your 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 hands, that can cause, you know, that can cause heat to be transmitted. So, manang mainitan ang imuha nga kamot. Okay? Because of, because of liquefied gas or liquid gas. The only difference between radiation and conviction is that in radiation, it utilizes air only. In conviction, it utilized a liquefied gas. Okay? Ang katong ni evaporate nga vapor. Flame contact, on the other hand, is another uh, type of heat transmission. So, all you have to do is, you know, if you if you contact, if you made contact uh, using your hand with the direct flame, of course, normally speaking, you can feel the, the heat of the flame because of the direct contact. And that is one way of transmitting the the heat also. Also, in the study of fire technology and arson investigation, it is important that we take a look on the difference between intensity of fire versus magnitude of fire. I mean, this 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 can be something that can be confusing in taking the board examination. But just to clarify things out, I wanted this to be include to be included in the discussion so that you can have an equivocal. Um, understanding on the two terms. So when you see intensity, that refers to the temperature of the fire. How hot the fire is burning. That again refers to the temperature. Magnitude would refer to the size. Okay? I repeat, intensity refers to the temperature. How hot the fire is burning. Unsa siya kainita. Of course, if the, the bigger the fire, the bigger would be the temperature or the higher would be the temperature. You do not expect that a smaller, you know, in a fire from the candle is the same heat with, you know, with the fire coming from various pieces of wood. Of course, if the, the, the burning is, is, is of higher size, you have to expect an increase of temperature. So, the smaller would be the fire or the smaller would be the size of the fire, would, the smaller would be or the lesser would be the the hotness or that temperature. Ang magnitude again refers to the size he duck on sa sa usaka kalayo. Flash point and far point. These two terms can also be very confusing. Flash point refers to the temperature at which the material is not hot enough to keep burning but still gives off enough vapors to cause a flame to flash across the surface. Far point, the temperature at which the material will give off ample vapors to keep burning. So, when you say flash point, although it gives heat, but the heat is not enough to cause enough vapor in order to create combustion or in order to sustain combustion. Ego lang siyang ni aso. Smoke is usually the product of flash point. Okay? Nasunog ang usaka material but then again ang pagkasunog niya is not enough that could sustain burning it is not enough that could sustain the vapor to flash across the surface pero ang far point on the other hand an enough ang temperature that can cause ample vapors to to keep burning now there is a difference between one far point of one material to the other material. It varies from one material to the other in terms of flash point and far point. For example, if you will compare a piece of wood and a cotton, 
you have to expect that the cotton has a laser far point compared to the wood because the moment you kindle the moment you you turn on the lighter and make the flame in contact with the cotton automatically the cotton will burn down the cotton will be on fire but if you will have the flame you think using a lighter and you use the flame in contact with the wood the wood has a higher fire point compared to, to the cotton so in the study of our technology and arson investigation, you have to examine also the different degree or different level of uh, far point of a particular fuel or material being involved in the burning process. Now, in the study a while ago on the two theories of um, fire, I mentioned about the four elements of fire tetrahedron theory. Now, I also mentioned that in order for you to extinguish the fire, all you have to do is to remove one element. Because even if the, the let us say, in the party tetrahedron theory, even if heat is present, even if uh, fuel is present, oxygen is present, uh, but you remove the chemical reaction between the two, meaning there is something that you intervene between the three, uh, between the three elements, automatically fire will never be created. Or even though there is fire already, okay, even if fire is already be, have been created, what you need to do is to simply remove one of the elements of fire and after the removal of the one of the elements that can cause the fire to be extinguished or mawala. So basically, na po upat kabok four methods of fire extinguishment. Number one is cooling, number two is smoldering, number three is uh, separation, and number four would be intervening on the chemical reaction. Now, we will examine this one by one. Now, cooling is the process that uses an extinguishing agent whose primary characteristic is heat absorption. Now, question, what do you think is the specific material that can absorb Okay, that can absorb heat. Okay, what do you think is a type, the type of material that can easily absorb heat? So if you will try to analyze this, water, okay, H2O or water is one of the most effective materials that can be used in heat absorption. Kaya kung naiinit, butangan ni moog tubig, automatically mawala man ang kainit, kaya ang kainit i-absorb man sa tubig. So in cooling, the agent or the extinguishing agent that is used is the water. So, unsa may remove sa cooling? In the cooling method of extinguishment, you remove the temperature of the fire. So, unsa may mo remove ang temperature? Unsa man ang temperature? Unsa man sa elements? Ang heat. So, if again, the principle is very simple. Once one of the elements is removed, fire can be extinguished. So in cooling, what do you what what is the element that you remove? The element that you remove is the heat or the temperature of the fire. So kung nagsunog na, imogi mo buag to may tubig, automatically ma wala ma extinguish ang fire kay ang heat imo mangi absorb, imo mangi eliminate. In smoldering, you exclude the oxygen. Okay, you exclude the oxygen. As I have said a while ago, let us say you can, uh, you lighted a candle. Ang kandila imo gibutang sa garapon. Ang sunog or ang pagkasunog or ang fire sa kandila magkahinay-hinay o kawala. Why? Because you consumed or the candle consumed the oxygen inside the bottle. And that can also cause the extinguishment of fire. So what you need to do is there is a fire you put a blanket on it. Katong blanket nga, basa siguro. Tapos dili siya masudlan o hangin. Meaning, kung di masudlan o hangin, there can be oxygen that can be uh, transferred from from the open space to to the to the burning flame. So, wala may oxygen, automatically, mapalong ang, mapalong ang imo nga fire. In the same manner, in the same manner, um, cadets, uh, another example of uh, another example of smothering is that um, um, if you can observe once you especially those persons who came from far flung areas so those individuals who are still using you know wood 
as a means of cooking their food. You can observe that in order for you to sustain the flame inside the no inside the burning wood, kinala ni mong taihopon. You need to blow. Ano wa kinala ni mong taihopon? Taihopon ni mo, especially kung kaso, ano taihopon man? Taihopon so that you can supply enough oxygen in the burning process. And when you blow the 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 you know the burning wood, it can sustain you know the heat, the oxygen uh, that can later also sustain you know the process of combustion so mga kinala ni mga hoypon so again if you remove the oxygen we call it as smothering and that can also be one way of smothering the fire as you can see on this you know on the illustration on your screen the third one would be the separation removal of the fuel so what you can see uh, in your screen separation will involve the removal of the fuel in cooling, you remove or you absorb the heat. In smothering, you remove the oxygen. In separation, you remove the fuel. You remove the material that is involved in the burning process. So, kung wala na tong wood, wala na tong sagbot, nga nasunog, kung sa pa may sunog, wala na. So, may extinguish ang fire. The last one would be intervening on the chemical reaction. So, this is the fourth method of extinguishment. The inhibition or the, interrup the interruption of the chemical reaction, chemical reaction, let us say on the figure, on the screen, you can see a fire extinguisher being used and that is one way of stopping or interrupting the chemical reaction of combustion. Now, normally, if a particular person will process for a building permit, once the building permit is, uh, you know, is processed in the Bureau of Fire Protection, one of the requirements for the building permit to be approved would be the presence of fire extinguisher. Why do you think fire extinguisher is very important? It is important in a sense that uh, if there are cases or fire cases, the most, you know, the most effective tool that can, you know, that can extinguish the fire would be the fire extinguisher. So what you can see on your screen is the picture of a fire extinguisher. Okay, so fire extinguisher varies depending on the size, depending on the size in the contents. Dili ni pare-pareha o contents sa po, ka katong fire extinguisher for metal fires, na po fire extinguisher that can be used for class A, B, C, and D. The question right now is, sir, uh, when will you know that a particular fire extinguisher can only be uh, exclusive on a particular type of fire? So what you need to take, uh, what you need to do is that um, all you have to do is there are label, okay? There is a label um, at the middle uh, of the container of the fire extinguisher, and you can see the specific types, okay? Specific types of fires that can be extinguished in the contents of that extinguisher. So kung iyon nakakita, for example, in this figure A, B, C, ra, boti pasabot, this fire extinguisher can only extinguish class A class B and class C of fire. Do not utilize the fire extinguisher uh, intended for class A, B, and C to class K or class, you know, class D because it may, uh, it may cause explosion. For example, if a particular fire extinguisher is only for class A fire, so some of them class A nga fire, this refers to any material that is ordinary combustible ordinary combustible materials like piece of wood paper so a fire extinguisher is class A lang exclusive pero imo gigamit sa class B which uh, you know which which could be of another type of fire that can you know that can cause uh, conflagration or more conflagration of the fire because of the you know because of the inappropriate fire extinguisher that you use. Now, in terms of using the fire extinguisher, it's very sim simple. All you have to do is to remember the word pass. Okay? All you have to do is to re you know, remember the word pass, the abbreviation pass. P stands for you pull the pin. As you can see on, your, on the picture, nanay pin deha, imura ng ibton. After you pull the pin, letter A is aim at the base of the fire. So, yung imong ang nuzol sa 
ang nozzle sa fire extinguisher, imong gi-aim towards the fire. Then number three, letter S, squeeze the lever. Squeeze the lever, then sweep side to side. So again, remember the word, the abbreviation pass, pull the pin, aim the nozzle of the fire extinguisher towards the fire, squeeze the lever. Once you squeeze the lever, the contents of the fire extinguisher will be extracted. You have to sweep side to side. And that is something that can extinguish fire. Now, specifically, dry powder extinguishers is a type of ex uh, fire extinguisher that can uh, extinguish class D fires. So many class D fires. This refers again to combustible metals. As I have said a while ago, it is inappropriate. It is not good that you will use a fire extinguisher that is supposedly intended on a different you know, type of fires. So, ang dry powder extinguisher pwede siya magamit sa class D fire. Pero if that fire extinguisher only labels for class A, B, and C, then so be it, do not utilize it for class D fire because that is something that can cause conflagration or perhaps, you know, perhaps explosion. Now, in, in the fire suppression, especially if the fire involves buildings or big houses, okay? Big houses or big establishments. It is important that you have to remember ventilation because ventilation is one way of clearing up the smoke and the gases inside a particular building. Remember, the smoke um, in fire incidents are, you know, are something that can cause suffocation because the smoke can be toxic on the body of the individual. So what you need to do is to remove the smoke on the building on a, on a, in a, on a building on fire. And uh, uh, through ventilation, the rescue and the overhaul, the rescue inside the building might be, you know, might be easy. Okay? Now, on ventilation, again, ventilation is a a process of clearing the smoke and gases inside the building. The ventilation consists of two types only. Number one is vertical ventilation. Number two is horizontal ventilation. They only differ on the direction at what particular point you try to clear or try to open an area. So we say vertical, pataas, right? Vertical ventilation the method to establish vertical ventilation is it but it must be worked from the top and bottom or top and down so as you can see on the figure on your screen asa mila gibangagan na asa taas on the roof in order for the smoke to be extracted from the baseline or from the ground floor up to no up to, up to this point okay up to this point. That could make the fire suppression or the rescue more speedy. So, vertical ventilation in a sense nga naas at pinakataas, naas sa roof, ni mo give bangagan para makagawas ang smoke. But if you will take a look on cross or horizontal ventilation, it's not the roof that is uh, that is uh, taken out, but rather in the vertical, uh, in the horizontal, cross or horizontal ventilation, you open or you make an opening at the side point of the house. Okay? At the side point of the house for the smoke to be extracted from this point to uh, to this point outside. But take note also that horizontal ventilation can only be utilized once you see that the smoke does not reach on a higher level. Meaning, as you can see on the figure, ang smoke na raman sa ilalom. Naraman sa ground, ground first floor. So, you need it, no need for you to open or make opening on the rooftop. Why? Because in a way, on the higher level, you cannot see fire. You cannot see smoke. It's only at the lower level. So, what you need to do is, instead of opening the roof, you open the side point of the side point. The window maybe sa ground floor to make the uh, smoke be extracted towards the outer, you know, outer side of the burning building. I have said a while ago, usually, duha lang ang ventilation, horizontal or vertical. But if in case, there is a need for you to 
use a device or an equipment, especially if the establishment of the vertical or horizontal ventilation will be very difficult, the easiest way, the most convenient way, okay, to extract the smoke from the building is by the use of what we call as a smoke ejector. A smoke ejector is a device, okay, it's an equipment of the fire agency used to extract the smoke from the, you know, from the building, uh, uh, from the building or from the uh, interior part of the building towards the outside part of the building. So, the third type is known as the mechanical or forced ventilation wherein you utilize again what we call as smoke ejector. Take note that uh, the action taken by the firefighters in covering or in to cover or to secure the building uh, would refer to what we call as exposure. On the other hand, the action taken by the firefighters to remove the occupants, we call this one as rescue, while the, the process of checking the structure or the material inside the building or anything that is involved in the fire, we call this one as overhaul. Now, take note, cadets, that the uh, uh, that the ventilation, the horizontal, the vertical, and the mechanical ventilation can only be utilized on burning buildings. But if a particular fire shall be considered as natural or natural cover fires, which involves forest, trees, shrubs, weeds, and, uh, and many more, you cannot use basically the types of ventilation. Okay? You cannot use ventilation. Why? Because natural cover fires involve, you know, wider areas. It is not, the smoke is not contained in the room, basically. So, um, sometimes fire suppression is more difficult with it in, when the fire involves, uh, or when the fire is classified as natural cover fire compared to the fire on a building or establishment. So, again, when you see natural cover fires, this involves, you know, our trees, our forests, our shrubs, weeds, and so on and so forth. Now, the natural cover fires basically consist or basically um, is, type into, is type into four. Number one is ground fires. Number two, surface fires. Number three, crown fires. Number four, spot fires. Take note of these four terms this, because this may came out in the board. Uh, this may come out in the board examination. Again, there are only four types of natural cover fires. One, ground fires refers to the fire traveling at ground level or below the surface. Okay, below the surface. Surface fires burn over grasses or grass, weeds, and grain, brush, and shrubs. So, sa mga nakalahi aning dua. Ang ground fires, for example, di ba, pagkasunog sa sagbot, ang ilalom niya ang roots na sunog. So, matawag siya o ground fires. Okay. The materials nga nasa, sa ilalom sa, sa sagbot na sunog, ground fire to siya. The third one is the crown fires. Crown fires are in the tops of trees and high brush, while the last one is the spot fires. Uh, spot fires are, are started in advance of the heads, by window sparks or bits of burning material. So, for us to understand the differences between the four types of natural cover fires, let us take a look on the, um, on, the on your screen. Can you take a look on the picture that you can see on your screen? So, ground fire, as uh, stated a while ago, na siya sa ilalom sa surface. Okay? Ilalom sa surface. O nasa sa ground level. Ang giturokan sa sagbot na sunog ang pagkasunog niya apinay siya sa ground fire surface fires in a sense that the shrubs the leaves of the grasses are burned down ang fire ana surface fire ang crown fires on the other hand is a type of fire that occurs on top of the trees okay ang leaves on top of the trees crown fire ang spot fire is a kind of fire that does not came mainly from the stream of, you know, 
of the original fire but rather it travels in advance for example if this is the main fire tungod sa hangin ang agipo ni lupad ni abot sa unahan ni nasunog ang unahan ang kanang ang pagkasunog inatawag siya og spot fire the spot fire would depend upon the direction of the wind so kung eastward ang direction sa of the wind you have to expect that there will be advances or advanced fire at the eastward because the direction of the wind is eastward so those are the differences between the ground the surface the crown and the spot fires also cadets in the board examination this came out i think this, way back 2018 or 2019 relative to the parts of the natural cover fire we only have three cadets we only have three number one is the head number two is the tail and number three is the flank so as you can see I already um, include a picture that would uh, that would actually depict the three types or the three parts rather the three parts of the natural cover fire. The head would refer to the point where the fire line is progressing faster. Ang head would mean would refer to uh, would actually depend rather would actually depend upon the direction of the wind. So in this picture, if the direction of the wind is towards this part, so kaning a portion. Muli siya gitaw og head. Okay? Asa ni progress faster. Asa ang point of direction. The point of direction I repeat would be dependent on the wind direction. So muli siya head. The withdraw or upward portion of the fire is called the tail. Ano withdraw in a sense that um, if the fire started in this portion and the direction of the wind is towards this portion you do, you have to expect that there will be less fire or there will be um, less temperature at this portion because of the direction of the wind so you have to expect that this shall be considered as the tail on the other hand other portions of the fire loan between the tail and the various heads and the slower burning areas between the head between the heads are called the flanks okay so tanang areas between the head and the tail shall be considered as the flanks i repeat the head of the fire of the natural cover fire would be dependent on the wind direction so when the wind, wind direction is eastward expect that the head would be eastward so ang opposite side niya would be the tail now take note between the uh, extinguishment or the fire extinguishment uh, between natural cover fire and those ordinary fires on uh, on establishments on buildings I think um, the type of fire that uh, needs or demands higher manpower um, and uh, the difficulty is high would be the natural cover fire because the natural cover fire would be vast would be of higher magnitude compared to uh, you know, compared to fire occurring in buildings and establishments. Where in fact, if you will take a look at the different news internationally, you can see a lot of forest fires that, uh, you know, that took months for, for uh, months for that fire to be extinguished. Unlike, you know, fire inside a building which can only be dis uh, extinguished, you know, maximum of one day or even it can be extinguished within one hour or two hours or hours only. But for natural cover fire, since the magnitude of fire is very large or very ample, you have to, you know, it demands a lot of manpower and sometimes the difficulty is very high. Um, generally speaking, in the extinguishment of the natural cover fire, there are only three generic, two rather, two generic method. Number one is the sectional method and the other one is one leak method. In the sectional method, what you do is you divide the you know you divide the magnitude the size of the fire into quadrants or you divide it into different sections and uh, each section there is a team that is responsible to map up patrol work or to execute extinguishment of the fire in that specific section only but uh, one of the disadvantages of the sectional method is that it demands as i have said a while ago it demands a lot of manpower because the magnitude will be that the size of the fire will be divided into various sections in the one leak method what you need to do is 
you take a look on you take a look on what particular section the far is uh, you know burning faster okay so if in point a you see that the far is burning faster in that area and you consider it as a head uh, as ahead of the far you can utilize the one one leak method the one leak method is also used is also known as the fastest and easiest method to use on a running fire a team is placed again at the location designated as the far land and ordered to work in a specific section now um, irrespective of whether it is sectional method or one leak method I think every firefighter or even when you will apply in a Bureau of Fire Protection Agency and it happened that uh, you are hired or employed thereof, I think you also have to remember fire bricks and backfires because these are two terms that can easily be utilized, especially if the type of fire being involved is a natural cover fire. Okay? So, katunggan hang mag fire officer, dapat dili ninyo kalimta ng fire bricks or backfires. And you can utilize this if the type of fire is a natural cover fire. So, sa many fire bricks? Fire bricks is an artificial fire, uh, an artificial fire bricks that consists of roads, highways, survey lines, and cleared areas. Back fires are employed to burn back toward the advancing heads, thus creating a fast break and stopping the fire because of a lack of fuel. So, sa may nakalahian eh. Now, as you can see on the screen, on your screen, I picture the ring. Kaning a first picture refers to the creation of the fire brick. So what you do, what you do in the fire brick is that you, you know, you clear a specific, you know, specific area or direction. You clear it and you make it as a road or a highway. So once there is a road or a highway, you have to expect that that highway or road does not consist fuel. So, wala yung fuel siya kay cleared areas man eh. Gigamaan man eh mo ugdalan. Imo mang ipadaplin ang mga fuel. For example, imo ipadaplin ang sagbot. Imo ipadaplin ang dry leaves. Imo gikuha ang mga kahoy. So, when the fire will reach at a specific corner, dili siya makalabang to the other side because of the lack of fuel from one point to the other. Alright? So again, dili siya maka-transfer from this side to the other side because there is no fuel in between. Kay imo manggi, gi-clearing man nimo, gikuaan man nimo fuel, gi himo man nimo highway or roadway. So basically, the fire will be extinguished naturally, especially if the direction of wind or if the the gust of wind is very slow. Pero kung kusog ang wind, nagamay imo ang fire bricks, still the fire can conflagrate to the other side. But the point in here, uh, in the fire bricks, is that you have to make sure that the fire cannot continue to the other side by clearing a particular path or making a highway. Okay? Ang sabot, di pa sabot ang clearing? Kwaan mo o fuel. Ang backfire, di ni siya clearing. But rather, you burn a particular section. So, kung naadri sa right, Nadri ang ang gasunog what you do is to burn in advance okay you burn in advance so once you burn in advance just like what this individual is doing iyang gi burn ang shrubs in advance so that once a particular fire on the other opposite direction will meet this fire uh, being you know being kindled by this individual dili na maka-advance on the other side. Why? Because the fuel has already been burned down. So, giunha na di mo og, sunog sa unahan. But take note, in making the backfire, you have to do this uh, at the edge of the fire break. Kaya kung nagsunog ka, nagamaka og backfire, naitabong ang backfire will, you know, will go on the other side, problema lang gihapon. So, may mo, Kumahimo, the backfire should be made at the edge of the fire break. So again, ang backfire, imo nang giunan og sunog ang edge so that the the incoming fire will no longer conflagrate to the other side. 
So, criminology students, those are the basic principles, theories, uh, basic methodologies in fire extinguishment. So, to continue with the discussion, let us move now to the Bureau of Fire Protection or the BFP. The Bureau of Fire Protection is also known as, in Filipino, Kawanihan ng Pagtatanggol sa Sunog. Take note of the word, ah, because this may come out, this may come out in the board examination. O kawanihan nag nang pagtatanggol sa sunog. O, this is their logo. Muni logo sa atong Bureau of Fire Protection. The Bureau of Fire Protection is under the jurisdiction of the Deep uh, the ILG or the Department of Interior and Local Government. So the responsibility of the BFP would mainly on the suppression of fire. Incidents. But uh, let us take a look on the uh, specific function sa BFP. Number one, prevention and suppression of all destructive fires. So again, that is the responsibility of the Bureau of Fire Protection. Number two, enforcement of the revised implementing rules and regulations of Republic Act 9514 known as the Fire Code of the Philippines and PD-1185 as amended by Republic Act 9514. Take note of the law, Republic Act 9514 known as the Revised Fire Code of the Philippines. Ang pinakaunang abalawad is Presidential Decree 1185. Ang bago, 9514. So, the Bureau of Fire Protection will have to implement the you know, the implementing rules and regulations of Republic Act 9514. The BFP is also charged in the investigation of the causes of fire at the same time responsible in filing the, uh, the complaint affidavit to the city or provincial, provincial prosecutor relating to the case. So, if a particular burning is classified or will fall under arson, Kaya ang arson is a crime already. So, the person who can, who can uh, one of the persons who, who may file a complaint or a case would be the Bureau of Fire Protection. In events of national agency and national emergency, the Bureau of Fire Protection will assist the military in the orders of the President of the Philippines. And uh, the next one is, and establish at least one fire station with all personnel and equipment per municipality and provincial capital. So, um, right now, right now, um, if uh, if you if you can observe in every municipality, you can see an office of the Bureau of Fire Protection. The implementation of the building code, like for example, the need of having a fire extinguisher in the building. That can be supervised by the BAP, especially the planning. Electrical plan of a particular building is also scrutinized, can be scrutinized by the BAP and, can, and the BAP is, can be one of the signatory of the blueprint of the building. Now, let us take a look on the historical perspective of the Bureau of Fire Protection because a long, long time ago, there is no BFP cadets. We did not have any BFP agency a long, long time ago. What we had was the INP, the PC, the Philippine Constabulary. So the, the, the function of the suppression of fire basically came from one of the units of the Philippine Integrated National Police Office or Fire Protection Service. The INP, if you can still remember, is created under Presidential Decree 765 the Integrated National uh, Police Law. Okay? The Integrated National Police Law. The Presidential Decree 765. It, uh, it created the PC, uh, the INP, with the Philippine Constabulary at its nucleus. So the suppression or the responsibility of fire investigation or fire suppression belongs to the INP a long, long time ago. But in the year 1990, as a uh, as we take a look on the history, Republic Act 6975 was passed and was been approved by the President. 
And the Republic Act 6975, known as the known as the, the ILJ Act of 1990, created four agencies. Di ba sa inyong uh, sa inyong history sa Philippine National Police sa inyong uh, Leia nga subject 6975 also uh, Republic Act 6975 also came out because 6975 created four agencies, independent agencies. Number one is The first agency created by 6975 is Philippine National Police. The second one is the Bureau of Jail Management and Penology. The third one is the Bureau of Fire Protection, the BFP. And the last one is the Philippine Public Safety College. I repeat, there are four agencies created under Republic Act 6975. The PNP, the BJMP, The BFP and the last one is the Philippine Public Safety College. Of course, again, uh, with the passage of that law, 1675, the BFP stations were established. Now, as we, uh, if, if we will try to take a look again on the hierarchical structure, like Philippine National Police and the Bureau of Jail Management and Penology, The Bureau of Fire Protection Agency is still again under the Department of Interior and Local Government. So meaning, it is the secretary of the DILJ which has the authority over the BFP. So supervision lies from the DILJ. One of the most important milestones, I hope this will come out in the board examination. One of the most important milestones in in the improvement in the modernization of the Bureau of Fire Protection Agency is on the passage of Republic Act 11589 because Republic Act 11589 is the law that contains the provisions on the modernization of the BFP but one important which was very controversial back then One of the most controversial back then provision of Republic Act 11589 was on the creation of security and protection units or the SPUs. Okay? The security and protection units in every region or in every city fire station that allowed 14 members at most to have firearms okay so this is one of the controversial prohibitions uh, back then but then again the law allows that there are 14 members of the security and protection units that can bear firearms and the SPUs can be utilized especially on the suppression of criminality because a long long time ago there are a lot of news that sometimes the occupants are very aggressive were very aggressive when the fire officers will suppress the fire. So in order to control the aggressiveness of the occupants or the aggressiveness of the people, there is a need that there should be someone who shall be part of the SPO and the SPO will be bearing firearms. Okay? And that is one way of protecting also the, the personnel of the BFP. Now let us familiarize ourselves on the different ranks ranking system of the Bureau of Fire Protection Agency. Now, you will start with, I, w- I would like to start with the highest, huh? highest cadets to the lowest rank. So, highest is Fire Director. I also include here in the, uh, the abbreviation. Fire Director, the two-star Major General. This is the highest rank, cadets. And this is the Chief of the Bureau. Okay, the Chief of the BFP, the Fire Director, the two-star Major General, followed by the Fire Chief Superintendent, one-star Brigadier General, and this is the qualification, okay, the rank qualification for the Regional Director, Directorial Staff, and Deputy Chief, meaning if you're a Regional Director, you must have this rank. You cannot have the rank of region, uh, you cannot be a Regional Director, or you cannot be appointed as a Directorial Staff or a Deputy Chief once you do not have this rank, the Fire Chief Superintendent. The Fire Chief Superintendent is followed by Colonel with three Sampagita leaves. Uh, 
three sa pagitan leaves that you can see on the shoulder board. This is the rank qualification for provincial director or city director, followed by fire superintendent, fire superintendent, um, um, the lieutenant colonel, okay, the lieutenant colonel, which consists of two sa pagitan leaves. This is qualification for jail warden. For chief. For fire chief and inspector, the major, you can see it on their shoulder board once sa pagitan leaf. Then fire senior inspector, the captain, two and a half leaves. Um, you can have this rank once you are a doctor, lawyer, chaplain, deputy warden. And uh, uh, but by the way, the doctor, lawyer, and chaplain is our professions that can be, you know, that can be one of the basis for you to qualify for lateral entry. So, pwede ka magka-fire senior inspector once you pass. So, this is the qualification, the rank qualification for deputy warden. For fire inspector, lieutenant, one and a half leave, uh, people who can avail on this rank are those nurse, social worker, the information technologist, officer, technician, engineer, therapist, teacher, scientist, accountant, and criminologist. Alright, so for the criminologist, we have the preferential of appointment as stated in Republic Act 11131. So we can avail on a lateral entry and we can become a fire inspector. All of these are commissioned officers. By the way guys, kanang major general, brigadier general, colonel, muna yung mga equivalent rank in the, in the army or in the Philippine National Police. Take note that in the Philippine National Police right now, we have a new ranking system. We have the patrolman, patrolwoman, but a long time ago, we only have PO1, PO2. So, uh, mao ni siya mga commission officer, officers. Now, let us go to non-commission officers. So, in the non-commission officers, from the lowest, okay? So, you can see an NUP or a civilian employed, the non-uniform personnel. The non-uniform personnel, take note, cannot be promoted to fire officer. Ang NUP, NUP ragun na siya. Once you are done with the training, na kay internship, ang tawag na mo is fire officer. Wala pa ka na kuha na niyo, pa ka na recognized. Once okay na, regular na ka, mahimo kang fire officer one. Oh, you can see on the other side ha, kani mga patrolman, corporal, these are equivalent ranks in the Philippine National Police. So you will have from the bottom, fire officer one, uh, fire officer one, fire officer two, three, senior fire officer one, senior fire officer two, three, and four. Unsa man yung mga GO, GO one, GO two. This refers to the ranks in com uh, in comparable or in comparison with the jail or the Bureau of Jail Management and Penology. For example, uh, G GO. Jail officer, J1, jail officer 1, jail officer 2, jail officer 3. Kanim again, mga private first class, class patrolman, maunig sa PNP. Ako balik ko ha. Kanin senior fire officer 1, or fire officer 1, up to senior fire officer 4, maunay rank ko sa BFP. Kanan J1, padulo sa SJ4, muna kanang sa BJMP, na equivalent. J1 stands for jail officer 1. J2 stands for Jail Officer 2 is GO1 stands for Senior Jail Officer 1 up to 4. Ang pinakalast niya, muna yung mga equivalent rank sa Philippine National Police. Now, after studying the hierarchical structure or the organizational structure of the BFP, let us now focus on the crime that involved burning. Okay, the crime that involves burning. Specifically, arson case. So, let us define first what is an arson. An arson is the intentional or malicious destruction of property by fire. Take note of the words intentional or malicious and destruction of property. Okay, that's the meaning of arson. Arson again, meaning gituyuan, intentional or malicious destruction of property by fire. Now, for a particular burning to be classified as an arson, okay? To be classified as an arson, we should take a look on the elements. 
So, if all of the elements are present thereof, then meaning, pwede siyang mahulog o arson. But, if one of the elements is absent, okay, if one of the elements of arson is absent, then you cannot consider it as an arson. For example, the first element is burning. Burning. What is it? You lit a, you lit a fire, or you kindle a fire on a building. Willfulness is a is an act of intention. Gito you an. The third element would be a motive. Motive is the element that uh, that push a person to commit the crime. For example, he committed it because uh, because of hatred. So hatred is a motive. He committed it for economic gain. He wanted to, you know, he wanted to get a specific monetary value. So economic gain would be a motive. Jealousy. Iya gisunog ang balay tungo sa iyang pagsilos iyang asawa. Motive. Malis on the other hand denotes hatred or desire for revenge. Intent on the other hand is the purpose or desire with which. With which uh, the act is done and involve the will to do the act. Now, if we will differentiate motive and intent, intent is the accomplishment of the act, while motive is the force or the element that push a person to commit the act. So, as I have said a while ago, all of the elements of the arson should be should be accomplished for you to say that this is an arson case. Why? Because as a fire investigator. Your main responsibility is to find out or to prove that there is maliciousness, that there is intent on the offender in the process of burning. Why? Because if you fail to prove malicious intent, if you fail to prove, if you fail to prove that there is intention on the part of the person in the process of burning, then there is no crime that exists. Kung sa may boat, ipasabot ane. For example, for example ha, electrical uh, wiring. The, the building owned by uh, person A uh, is on fire because of electrical fault or faulty electrical wiring. Because of the faulty electrical wiring, the fire conflagrated on the building of person A and conflagrated to the building of owned by person B. Question, pwede bang mapereso o pwede bang mubayad si person A tungkol kay nasunog ang building ng person B? The answer is, it depends. If in case the intention or the negligence have not been proven by the fire investigator, then again, wala siya civil liability, wala criminal liability. The person A can never be put into prison person A can never be allowed to pay. Why? Simply because there is no intention. There is no malicious intent on the part of person A to conflagrate the fire from his building to the building of person B. Ako ang point? So meaning, without the intention, without the motive on the part of the person, there is no arson, there is no arson case. So your job as the investigator is to find out what motivates the individual to burn the building. And if you have the prima facie evidence to prove that a person burned the building by intention, then that's it. Arson can be fine. Pero again, faulty electrical wiring lang, nag, nag, nagpansak og heater, na limta, na sunog ang heater, uh, possibly na negligence. But again, arson can never be arson can never be filed to the court. The law presumes that a fire is accidental. Hence, criminal design must be shown. Fire caused by accident or criminal design must be shown. Fire caused by accident or negligence does not constitute arson. That is very clear, cadets. Mas klaro pas untong toto. Again, ang fire caused by accident or negligence that does not constitute arson. Okay? Yeah, pansak ang he, uh, uh, heater, nasunog ang heater, there might be negligence on your part because you did not check the heater, but then again, negligence is not arson. So therefore, um, since it is a, not an arson case, you can only be liable for negligence, but you can never be liable for arson. 
So as the fire investigator handling the case, the basic line of your inquiry should be the point of origin of the fire. Asa man ang fire ga so good? Okay? Asa man at what part of the building the fire started? Then, um, you take a look at the motives. Okay? You take a look at the motives. Whether a, a motive is present, whether there is intention on the part of the perpetrator in the commission of the act. So, these are the, as you can see on your screen, these are the most common motives of an arsonist. It could be economic gain. Okay? Economic gain, for example, um, uh, at, the, at, the, at the brink of bankruptcy na ang usa ka negosyo, negosyo. Tapos in order for you to claim an insurance, you have to burn the building. So pwede siyang matawag og arson. And economic gain is one of the motive that you have to prove. The profit by the perpetrator other than the insured person. They just just say, um, you are given um, a money. Okay? A money in exchange of you know, in exchange of burning a particular building. So that can also be a motive. Concealment of a crime. For example, you deposit, you deposited the body of the person in a specific place and you burn that place. That can also be considered as a motive. Pyromania is, uh, is, is, is a morbid propensity, cadets. When you say morbid propensity, these are uncontrol uncontrollable impulses. Pyromania is a morbid propensity of getting a gratification, even sexual gratification, by merely, merely watching the building on fire. So, na yung mga tao aning mga abnormal, psychologically abnormal, like they love to watch the building on fire. And they even get sexual arousal. So, sulubo nila ang building, tapos makakuha sila sexual arousal or sexual gratification. Ang tawag sa sakit or disorder is pyromania. The person is called as pyromania. That's the difference between, between the two. The disorder, the morbid propensity to set the building in fire and get sexual gratification thereof is known as pyromania. The person is known as pyromaniac. Now, with the fire still con conflagrating and you are the person assigned on the case, you can even, you know, you can even project or you can even assess what particular material or substance are burned or are subject to the process of combustion or burning by taking a look at the color of the smoke. For example, if the smoke is black with deep red flame, that would indicate that the material involved in the bur burning process are petroleum products such as tar, rubber, plastic, etc. If the smoke is heavy brown with bright red flame, then you have to assume that the uh, material uh, in the burning process consists of nitrogen products. If magnesium products, the smoke would be white with bright flame. For asphalt, you can observe this one on the streets. Kana masunog na mga uh, ispalto or kanang mag, kana magtimpla sila sa ispalto. Usually black smoke with red and blue green flame. For potassium products, you can see purple violet flame. For chloride or manganese products, you can see greenish yellow flame. And for calcium products, you can see bright 3D shield of flame. So, this can also help fire suppressors or fire officers to easily suppress fires because once you see the color of the smoke and you can determine that mat specific material, specific substance being involved in the bur uh, burning process, that will help you decide what particular method of extinguishment should you use. Because as I have said a while ago, once you use a different method of extinguishment and the products or the material involved in therein is different, then what will happen is more propagation of fire should be expected. For example, ang imong gigamit, tubig. O niya, ang imong gi-extinguish ka fire. Katong fire nagikan sa gasolina. So instead ka, instead ka mapalo, mo daghan na nauto, mo conflagrate kay Kung ang gasiga, gasolina, and you put water on it, automatically, that could increase the amount of substance and water can help spread the, the fire. So, din siya po ide. So, you use a specific fire extinguishment uh, on a specific type of material. That is why the indication of the smoke could help you determine what type of material, which in turn will help you assess 
or we help you uh, um, utilize a specific type of method for extinguishment. Also, once burning is intentional, we have special aggravating circumstances. With these special aggravating circumstances, cadets, I, I repeat this because I think this is very redundant. We have different circumstances affecting criminal liability. Diba? We have aggravating circumstances, mitigating circumstances, we have exempting circumstances, we also have justifying circumstances, we have alternating circumstances as the last, we have five. Now, in the aggravating circumstances, if it involves arson, when the arson is committed with intent to gain, mutaas ang imuha nga ang number of years of sentence. So, you see, aggravating additional number of years in prison. If committed with benefit of another, if the offender is motivated by spite or hatred towards the owner or occupant of the property being burned, aggravating. If committed by a syndicate, what's the syndicate? Ang ginaingon ha? At least three persons. Sir, matawag ba ug to? Syndicate? Dili. Matabag, matawag ba ang one person to be a syndicate? No. What is required by the law is that three persons involved in the burning of the building, that three persons shall qualify for a syndicate. And a syndicate is a circumstance, ah, no, no, a special aggravating circumstance that will add or will magnify the number of years of uh, years of sentence of the person being convicted thereto. Now, lastly, cadets, in uh, every fire incident, the fire investigator is, uh, is uh, required to submit a fire investigation report. So, a fire investigation report is the final written results of taking notes, recording observations, and interview interviewing witnesses. It includes the written result of the construction and size of the burn structure, what the firemen observed and encountered upon their arrival at the fire scene, the color of the smoke and flame, and the intensity and the location of the fire. So, every fire incident the one who is charged with this uh, accomplishment of the report should submit this one on time at the BFP's office. I hope I was able to, I was able to refresh you, or I hope I was able to give you learning on fire technology and arson investigation subject, which is one of the courses under the major area CDI or crime detection and investigation. Again, I would like to repeat. There are six major areas in criminology, and in the six major areas, uh, these are also the basis in taking the three-day um, criminology licensure examination. I just hope that by reviewing the FARTEC and arson investigation subject, this could, you know, um, help you pass a future criminology licensure examination. But if in case you have questions that pops out uh, from your head, uh, in the course of the discussion. I would be happy that there is a comment section below. You can type in your questions and uh, by due time, I may take a look at it and provide you with unequivocal answers. Thank you so much. Happy learning. God bless and stay safe.